everybody. Welcome back to Universe Sandbox. Today we're doing your suggestions again. We're going to start by putting a moon that has a moon that has a moon with a moon. Okay, so we definitely need a star to start. So let's put, let's just do a random known star for this. This one's almost twice the size of the sun, but that should be fine. So I think if we're gonna want as many moons as we can, we're gonna wanna do a gas giant. So let's do a pretty large gas giant. Um, Like maybe 50 Jupiter. Okay, that starts it turning into a brown dwarf once it gets that high. We'll do 30 Jupiters. No, it's still heating up too fast. Ah, it's heating up too fast. Dead city down. Okay, I think this will work. Okay, now, so this planet has 4.3 times the mass of Jupiter. So this is what we're gonna use as like our home planet. And then we're gonna try to put a moon with a moon with a moon with a moon. So we're gonna start, let's you, let's do like a pretty big object for its first moon. Like maybe even another gas giant. Did that work? Yes, it still counts it as a moon. So let's see what our orbits are looking like. It might be a little bit binary. No, that looks like a perfect orbit of a gas giant around a gas giant. So this gas giant still has the mass of seven Earths. So now let's give this gas giant its own moon. Um, what if we did Earth for its moon? How close do we want it? Maybe this far? Let's see if that works. That does not look like it's going to work. So if that doesn't work, we might need to go even smaller to start. Let's try to do Mars for a moon. Okay, that looks like it's working better. So we have this gas giant, which has this moon, which has Mars as its moon. And then now Mars needs a moon. Let's go with random. Let's try to do Phobos because Phobos is already Mars's moon. No, that didn't work. We might have to go super, super small to get this one to orbit like that. Oh, that just crashed into it. It's like the gravitational pull of this larger object is going to stop this from working. What's like the smallest object we could do? Like a watermelon in orbit around Mars. Even the watermelon doesn't work and it shoots out fragments of Mars. A watermelon really close. How about that? See, the pull of this object kind of ruins the orbit and then it just crashes and that watermelon must be going so fast for it to do that to it. Okay, well that looks like a lot of little moons. So we're gonna count that as a moon in a moon in a moon in a moon, maybe. Good enough for me. Hey Chip, can you make a star binary with a black hole and then add planets to the system? Yes, we can do that. Okay, so let's grab a star. Let's do random known star. How's this one? A little bit bigger than the sun. Yeah, that'll work. And then if we want binary black hole, we do a black hole one solar mass. So these are similar in mass. And then we just do binary. We'll go out here probably. Okay, so now the black hole and the star are orbiting each other like this. You can see that. And then if we select both of them and then create a barycenter, this will show the middle of their orbits. So they're both orbiting around this point. So if we add a planet around this point, it should work. So let's try adding a random rocky planet. We'll go about one AU away from the barycenter. Let's see how that orbit works. Wait for like a year on that planet. And that looks pretty stable. Okay, so we got a star and a black hole orbiting each other and then a planet orbiting those. So let's see if we can make this planet habitable around this black hole and star binary system. Okay, so we're going to start by adding some water. We'll go fill up like all those lower areas so it looks similar to Earth in water to land ratio. And then we're going to add an atmosphere to it. What's our mass on this right now? About 26% of Earth. We're going to change that to about 80% of Earth. And that'll put its radius at almost the same as Earth. So it's about the same size as Earth. The gravity is going to be a little less on it. But let's add an atmosphere. We'll go similar to Earth in how thick it is. Okay, that's already looking pretty good. I bet we have a chance of life already. Yeah, 41.9%. So let's change some of our other settings. Rotational period, we want that one day. The tilt on it, that's a super extreme tilt. So let's maybe do more traditional, just slightly tilted like that. So we still get seasons, but it's not super bad. Let's add a magnetic field. There we go. So you can see that magnetic field now and we can turn up the strength to kind of protect it even more. So this will protect it from solar radiation coming off the star um, from like ripping away the atmosphere and other things like that. And that puts us at 67.8% chance of life, which is pretty high. How's our temperature on here? Negative 43 Celsius. If we put that at 14, that'll be a lot nicer to live on. 14 Celsius is 57 Fahrenheit. That puts us at 75.3% chance of life. Let's give it a small moon now. Something like that, just for the tides and stuff. Let's make it a little bigger. Similar in size to our moon. We'll make it 80% of our moon, so it's like the re relation is about the same. Okay, so here's our moon. It looks kind of 
dark, but I kind of like the way it looks. And that is going to be in orbit around our black hole life planet. And that is all in orbit around a, you, it looks like it's going to leave, but it really won't. That is in orbit around a star and a black hole orbiting each other. So let's watch one year of this and make sure that it is still stable. We're going to watch our planet go around. Yes, look, it's working. So if a black hole and a star were binary with each other, you could still have life on that planet. Our next suggestion says combine all of the planets, even dwarf planets, and replace the sun with it and make the solar system orbit the mega planet and see what happens. Okay, so let's go in new simulation. So we're going to combine every single planet together, including the dwarf planets, and then see if our solar system can orbit around that. So we're going to start with Mercury, put Venus next to that, and oh, Venus kind of eats Mercury. <laughs> and then Earth right here. They combine with each other. Mars is smaller, so we'll see that get pulled in. Jupiter is going to be a lot bigger than these, and it'll suck everything in. Boom. Okay, and then Saturn's a little bit smaller than Jupiter, but it'll get sucked in by Jupiter. Uranus goes here, also gets sucked in. Neptune. Beautiful. <laughs> it's so fast. Pluto, that little dot. Um, and then what are the other dwarf planets? We'll just put all these in. Vesta, Sedna, Haumea, Make Make. Okay, that should be good. That's every single planet and dwarf planet combined into one mega planet. I mean, it still says Jupiter because that was the biggest object. So we're going to name it Mega Planet and then we will save it. So now we're going to go into our solar system and replace the sun with the mega planet and see what happens to everything. So here's the sun. We can go replace object and then we just type in mega planet. So before we click play, this mega planet has a mass of 1.3 Jupiters or only 0.1% the mass of the sun. So I don't think it'll hold everything in very well, but let's see what happens to the solar system. You can see it looks like Venus, Mercury. It looks like all the planets actually just kind of deorbit and start launching into space because there's nothing holding them in anymore. Jupiter, Saturn. Yeah, it looks like that's what's going to happen. There's not a strong enough force to hold everything together. So before everything escapes, let's put in a really big star. Okay, here's Beetlejuice. We're going to put Beetlejuice in the middle and see what happens to everything trying to escape. Oh, everything immediately starts coming back. Some of it gets launched back out, maybe into orbit. It looks like some of the planets were too far. Most of them, actually. Yeah, so pretty much everything escaped. But what do we still have here? We have Haumea. Neptune is still in orbit. Yeah, Pluto is still in orbit, but then everything else still gets lost to interstellar space. Okay, Bird Shoes asks if we can make Phobos and Deimos 10 times bigger. So if you didn't know, Phobos and Deimos are Mars's two moons. They're really small objects. You can see them right here. Uh, they're like asteroid size. So it will be interesting to see what they would look like 10 times bigger. So let's start with Phobos. Here's Phobos, this little thing here. We're gonna go to its radius and just 10 times that. There's it 10 times. And then we'll do the same thing with Deimos. Here's Deimos and then 10 times its radius. Okay, and then we're going to click play and see if anything happens. It looks like, oh, Phobos is within the Roche limit now of Mars. I saw some clouds come off it. We might need to make it bigger. Okay, let's do a hundred times bigger than they were. Oh, that might be too big. We'll go a hundred times bigger than they originally were now. So you can see Phobos and Deimos now actually have a sizable mass compared to Mars. Let's slow down time and watch. Yes, so Phobos is in the Roche limit of Mars which means that the gravity is so strong that it starts to pull apart Phobos. And if this was realistic, Mars would actually get rings from this. You can see it almost starts to form rings, but this will just fade out over time. So yeah, we kind of gave Mars rings and Deimos looks like it's okay because it's far enough away. But if Phobos and Deimos somehow went 100 times bigger than they are, then Mars would get rings. And it looks like Phobos will recover eventually after getting a lot of its mass ripped out. That's pretty cool. Okay, our next suggestion asks if we can remove the black hole from the center of the Milky Way galaxy. So let's pull up the Milky Way. Okay, here's the Milky Way. So Sagittarius A right here is the center of the Milky Way. So let's try to delete it. Delete. The entire galaxy just kind of went dark. So there's no super massive black hole now at the center of the Milky Way. Let's speed up time really fast and see if it all falls apart or what happens to it. Yeah, look at that. All of this intersection isn't being held in by that black hole and the entire galaxy just spirals away and everything leaves. That's interesting. Wow, that was cool. Okay, and our next suggestion asks if we can make all the planets disappear and make it so there are only moons. Okay, so I opened a simulation that has all of the moons for all the planets. So there's actually a lot, like this is Jupiter. You can see how many moons it has. 
So let's start by deleting Jupiter. We're gonna keep the game paused while we delete each planet. Saturn, delete. Mars, delete. Earth, delete. Venus, delete. Mercury, delete. So you can just see like there's Phobos and Deimos, there's the moon. Okay, Neptune, delete. Uranus, delete. Pluto, we can leave because Pluto's not a planet. And now let's play time and see what's gonna happen to the solar system. I don't know how fast we can run it because there's a lot of objects. Okay, so it looks like a lot of the moons just immediately start heading for the outer solar system. And some of them start to orbit. I guess it depends on where they were in their orbit. A lot of, yeah, a lot of things are heading out of the solar system completely. So this is after years and years and years though. So it does look like there's, it's a very chaotic system now and we have a lot of small moons just orbiting the sun now. So I wonder if you could simulate super, super long time periods if some of these would collide together and make new planets. The current fastest we can run it is only four years a second. So there's not really a way for us to simulate millions of years like this. That is what would happen if all of the planets suddenly disappeared. Okay, thank you so much for watching this video. If you have more suggestions that you want to see, put them down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.